1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 to 27 is the text for our class. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 to 27. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air, but I keep under my body and bring it unto subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself shall be a cast away. And incorruptible is the title of our message from 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 25 to 27. The promise of eternal reward for the faithful Christian is his motivation to serve Christ. Just as the athlete who seeks to win a competition does all he can to keep himself in his best physical state, so the Christian in his spiritual state for his heavenly reward our Lord's commendation given in Matthew 25, verse 21 says, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. What a blessing it is to serve the Lord. And the Lord knows how we served him. And he will reward us according to how we have served him. An athlete sustains an injury, can be out of the competition. So the Christian who sins against God faces the chastisement of God and a loss of reward. As such, the athlete is careful to protect himself from injury by being watchful over all aspects of his preparation and conditioning. So that the, so the Christian, he has to be a clean vessel to f- be fit for the master's use. So we have the memory verse that we saw in Galatians that says, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the last of the flesh. When we would walk in the Spirit, we'll let the Spirit of God fill us, then the flesh would not be able to fulfill its power over us. But God wants us to know that there is a wrestling that is going on in our lives, you see. There's a wrestling match inside us. And God wants us to see and understand that that battle that is within us. If we haven't understood, then sometimes we, we realize, how come my life is like that? How come this and that? How come we cannot understand? Well, when we understand what God does and what He's doing, then we would understand and have a perspective of our own lives. And that's very important, isn't it? Because He wants us to be working, living at the maximum, isn't it? To the maximum of our potential according to the faith that He has bestowed upon us. And so, Paul says, every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. In other words, he is able to have a sense of self-control. That's the meaning of the word temperate. From the illustration in verse 25, the Apostle Paul now gives the example of a boxer. He says he has to make his punches count striking, winning blows on the opponent and not waste his energy 
missing the target of sin. And Matthew Poole, he observed well, he says, I give you no other counsel than I myself take. I endeavor so to live, so in all things I behave myself, as I may not be at uncertainties whether I please God by my actions or shall get to heaven, yea or no. I am a fellow soldier with you, fighting against sin, and I make it my great business not so to fight, so to resist sin, as if I did beat the air that is to get no more fruit, profit or advantage by it, than if I threw stones against the wind or with a staff did beat the air. It is not every running and every, of every fighting that will bring a man to heaven. It must be a running with all our might and continuing our motion till we come to the end of our race of fighting with all our might and that against all sin. We realize that the battle is great. The temptations to lure us, to entice us to fall, you realize will come from every anger, from everywhere, every aspect, anywhere. And so you realize that we have to be watchful, to have to be on our guard, isn't it? Then you ask yourself, how do you live such a life? How do you live such a life? Well, you know, when we are working, we were sometimes subjected to that kind of a, a, a schedule. In my case, we were involved in work in the day, Asia works in the day. In the afternoon, Europe works. And after midnight, America works. And so, if you're on a work right, with a business, with a manufacturing in Europe, and then with an with a end customer in the US, you realize that wow, you're, you're around the clock. You're, you're receiving calls around the clock. The pressure is on all the time, all the time. And so much so that sometimes we ask ourselves, when would there be a relief of the pressure? When can we get a relief? Right? So by, by the time the night comes, then the morning is working hours again. And you carry on the next day. And if there are some kind of a uh, situation, some kind, some kind of a crisis, and you can be on it for weeks on end. And you find yourself weary. Well, this is just a very feeble physical example to help us to see and understand the kind of a battle that the Lord is expecting that the that the Christian would wage as a warfare, that the enemy will come just as the time when you are most weary and when you are most unguarded. That is why Satan tempted our Lord after 40 days and 40 nights without food, without drink. The enemy came to tempt. And you realize that the enemy is merciless because it's target your soul and it's unscrupulous. Paul, Peter described as a devouring lion. Devouring lion. If he can overcome you, take you down, you will be taken down. But because you have the Spirit of God in you, God is with you. Therefore, in the time of your weariness and you cannot, as it were, care, well, God is caring for you. 
the darts that the enemy shoots at you, he provides his shield to defend you. That's the power that we have with God as our shield, as our protector. That's why the psalmist would pray, praise and extol God. The Lord is my shield, my great reward. And so the Lord wants us to see that indeed in laboring for Him, there is indeed a great eternal reward that He seeks to give to us. Verse 27, But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. The athlete's greatest fear is that he's injured because it disqualifies him from the competition. Even though he may have trained hard for a long time to prepare for the race, he will not win the prize because he cannot participate in the race. This is the same for the servant of God. Sin disqualifies him from his reward from God because of the disciplinary disapproval of God. William MacDonald. The Apostle Paul sends a word of warning for all servants of God to live circumspectly. By the grace of God to exercise self-control, to be led by the Spirit to live a victorious life of service, there is reward awaiting the faithful servant. This is the same for the servant of God. Sin disqualifies him. And the Apostle Paul sends the word of warning that indeed we may be faithful. And he is giving himself as an example to mortify the flesh and to live in the spirit. For in so doing, he shall not be disapproved by God, but receive the commendation of God at the end of life's journey. His personal testimony at the end of his life was that he has fought a good fight. He has finished the race. What a wonderful uh, end, conclusion it is to life, isn't it? That we have fought a good fight. That we will not be a castaway. The Apostle Paul speaks of the vigilance to spiritual discipline lest he disqualifies himself from work, from the work through sin. And he's careful to warn his readers not to yield to temptation. Do you watch yourself? Self-watch. Here, Paul watches himself. And he watches himself carefully so that he may not be rejected by the Lord, so that he may stand the test and be not a castaway. Paul was speaking here of, not of salvation, but of service. He's not suggesting that he might ever be lost, but that he might not stand the test as far as, as his service was concerned, that he might be rejected for the prize. And here the Lord is saying to us that indeed there is good motivation to fight the good fight, to receive our heavenly reward, to be a faithful servant of the Lord. And He's saying to us that let us strive for the mastery with temperance. Temperance in all things, every aspect of life. So that's why we call the process after we are saved sanctification. We are made holy by God in various aspects of our life. Various aspects. So He will deal with various aspects of our life at a different time so that we would see 
His will for us in that area of our life. And then we learn. But if we don't learn, then we will, we will receive another test, another lesson in that area. Because His purpose is that we will grow, that we would learn, that we would flourish in our Christian life. And that's the process of sanctification that God puts us through trials and temptations that comes our way so as to train us, so as to prepare us, so as to bless us with the reward that He has for us. So for our older folks, right, the test is even greater, isn't it? The test of physical limitations, the test of battling with even our own minds to remember this and remember that. Great test. Right? When we are younger, we don't face that kind of a test. But now we face a different test, isn't it? We no longer walk. We come in a wheelchair. That's a greater test, isn't it? And as God would test us, well, let us be strong. And let us indeed prove ourselves worthy to be His children, to stand the test. And, you know, with every test that God gives us, right, he will always provide us with a wherewithal how to handle it. Right? There's no test that God gives us uh, that we cannot handle. Every test that He gives us, we can handle. And that's the promise that God gives us. 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to men. And God is faithful. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that ye may be able to bear it. So the Lord will see you through and the Lord will see us through and He allows us to be tested just as Job says, after He has refined me, I shall come forth as gold. Right? You refine gold at a certain temperature, all the impurities would be, would be dissolved. What is left would be the pure metal. And that is what God is doing in our lives. And God wants us to hang on there. And God wants us to realize right, that He will make good and that we are able to trust Him to do all things well. May the Lord help us in this new week. May the Lord strengthen us. Let us pray. Father, we thank Thee for Thy holy word. That indeed, we are to be temperate in all things as we strive for the mastery in this life journey to receive an incorruptible crown that the Lord promised to His people. Lord, help us. We are weak. We are prone to fall. But Thou art strong. So Lord, help us to subsist in Thee. Help us to rest in Thee. Help us to find peace in Thee. Find strength in Thee. Lord, strengthen Thy people and bless this new week for Thy own honour and glory. This I ask with thanksgiving. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.